Coming up, price of lumber still sky high, more than double pre-pandemic levels. We'll explain. Tax-free weekend is officially upon us. Details on the benefits for Iowa shoppers tonight. And Sturgis, South Dakota, officially playing host to the largest motorcycle rally of the year. Your KCAU 9 News at 10 starts right now. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Friday night. I'm Sophie Erber. Tim has the evening off. In June, the price of a thousand feet of lumber cost on average $1,500. It now sits at about half that price, but KCAU 9's Dylan Adams tells us why lumber producers are not out of the woods yet. It's our top story at 10. The COVID-19 pandemic brought about challenges for nearly every industry, but especially the home building market. Since April of 2020, the cost of lumber products for an average single-family home rose $30,000. Many recent reports have come out about a sharp drop in lumber prices, but that's not the case for all products, such as plywood and oriented strand board, or OSB. This past year, they hit record high prices. Uh, they've come down quite a bit. Uh, depending on what it is, OSB remains uh, quite elevated but the dimensional and stuff's come down uh, some. In fact, since April 2020, OSB prices have skyrocketed by close to 500% and still on the rise. That according to the National Home Builders Association. And on average, a single family home uses 2,200 square feet of plywood and more than 6,800 square feet of OSB. Of course, lumber isn't the only supply needed to build a home. Other commodities such as steel, plumbing, electrical wire have all been tough to find for contractors over the past year. There was a time when people were waiting, you know, six to eight months to get appliances. You know, there was contractors that were struggling just to get, you know, getting wire and uh, con, you know, kind of to finish projects and stuff. Uh, it's been a challenge. Pat Redman became the general manager of Lechner Lumber just before the pandemic started. He's witnessed supply issues due to a variety of reasons. Gas, trucking, you know, everything that it you know, takes to get lumber to where it needs to go. Uh, and then the fires now, uh, the fires last year, the beetle, you know, uh, Canada not, you know, being able to get across the border with some things. Uh, there's a lot of factors. And even though framing lumber prices have declined since their all-time peak, they're still about twice as high as pre-pandemic levels. But Redmond says business is booming. What's surprising to me is uh, customers still come and pay that high price. We haven't seen a decline in, uh, in business. Redmond says that he hasn't seen a decline in demand at Lechner Lumber because contractors still have projects to complete and low interest rates offset the high commodity prices for those looking to build a home. Dylan Adams, KCAU 9 News. Thanks, Dylan. And tax-free weekend is back in the state of Iowa today and tomorrow. If you missed it today, shoppers can purchase clothing and shoes and everything is tax exempt as long as the items are less than $100. But unlike most years, Sunday will not be included this year in tax-free weekend. The promotion will instead end tomorrow at midnight. Christy Pittman has owned her boutique store, Mala Mode, for 14 years in Sioux City and says she's excited for these two special days in August every year. And one thing is funny is that people don't even realize it's tax free weekend. So they come in the store and it's an extra bonus. So we're like, hey, it's tax free. You get 7% off. And they're like, yeah. So on top of our clearance, the 75% off the tax free is even a bigger discount. Um, For a full list of taxable and non taxable items, visit tax.iowa.gov. The third suspect in the New Year's Eve day shooting has changed his plea to guilty on all four charges. Carlos Morales appeared in court this afternoon and pled guilty to second degree murder, plus three counts of reckless use of a firearm. Morales is one of four people connected to that New Year's Day shooting that left 18 year old Mia Critis dead. According to court documents, Morales reached that plea agreement Thursday. A sentencing date has not yet been set. Doctors at the University of Nebraska's Medical Center are warning tonight that people should be concerned about the recent rise in COVID-19 case numbers. Health officials at UNMC say the rise is tied to the Delta variant, that is that new and dominant strain of COVID-19 now believed to make up roughly 93% of all new cases in the United States. 
The variant is not more likely to be more severe than the original virus, but it is more likely to produce severe illness in the unvaccinated. Additionally, the Delta variant is more contagious than the original virus. So we don't completely understand why Delta is so much more transmissible and severe. Some of it has to do with its ability to bind more effectively to the cell receptor that it gains entry with. And part of it is it replicates much more rapidly. And so people shed much more virus uh, with Delta variant infection than they did with previous versions of the virus. Dr. Lawler says the best protection against Delta and the other variants of COVID-19 is to get vaccinated. The Delta variant is not stopping visitors from heading to the first day of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in South Dakota. However, many tourists have noticed the pandemic's impact on the cost of their travel. It's always been on our bucket list. Tracy McEnroe um, and her husband will check off the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally this year, and they plan to make the most of it. How? Their bike was here waiting for them as they walked off the plane, flying into Rapid City Regional Airport from Cape Cod. It would take us a week to get out here and a week to get home. We want all the time here to ride. Robert Cullen has been trucking in bikes to Rapid City for 28 years. Way back then, we came in a dually pickup truck with a small trailer, probably only about maybe 10 bikes. Now, he's up to two trailers, one loaded with 30 bikes and the other with 28 from around the East Coast. I always say it takes a month. Because by the time you get ready, settled, pick up all the bikes, unload out here, wait for everything, reload, go empty, and be done. It's, it's a lot. And basically, we um, bring the motorcycle to him. Um, he's super organized. He packs it up the way, basically, you're picking them up. McEnroe says it would have cost twice as much for them to ride here than to just pack up the bike and fly. Avoiding a spike in gas prices, something Cullen could not ignore. We charged 1050 This year we had to go up $100 because of the fuel and everything else, the tolls, stuff like that. You'll see the trucks parked at the airport until the bikes come back, the kickstands are down, and they throttle up in something different. Meanwhile, the Woodbury County Fair kicked off today, and KCAU 9's Mallory Smith was there exploring the grounds and all they have to offer. Mallory, what are some of the things people can look forward to this year? Sophie, much like surrounding fairs going on right now, the Woodbury County Fair is going full force this year. We're already on the third day, but so much has happened since the opening day. Today, a hypnotist was there to entertain and, of course, rides for fairgoers to enjoy. Vendors are there selling many donuts, burgers, and pizza. There are small shops as well as a display showcasing what won in this year's competitions, while a winner herself made an appearance today. It has been such an amazing experience. Even though I'm so busy and tired, I would not trade it for anything. I love being able to talk with everyone and having like little girls look up to you. <laughs> Many told KCAU they were excited to have these festivities back after a year away. Some even said they chose to come every day this week to make up for missing time. Oh, we went to the carnival. The carnival's pretty fun. Uh, yeah. You need to stop we banging on our no trail. Cow. We went to the rodeo. The rodeo was super Old cool. Town's pretty fun, too. They got air conditioning yeah. at the school. Yeah. You know, I've been sitting in my room playing video games all day, so it's a blessing to be out here. Admission fees vary with age. The fair is five days and will run until August 8th. Mallory Smith, KCA Unite News. A blessing to be out there. I think a lot of people are saying that this year for a few reasons. The for fairs sure. are back. We have good weather for the fair, uh, for the most part. So right. uh, as long as we get past another marginal severe risk tonight, uh, looks like home clear for all the fairs this weekend. Yeah, it looks like things should be okay out there, Sophie. Just have to pay attention to some changing conditions. As you look outside here on the Ho-Chunk Center camera, set up in downtown Sioux City with a, a train running through there near Famous Dave's. Temperatures are in the 70s and 80s outside. It's still very very warm, 71 in Valentine, 78 is the temperature in North Platte and Sioux City. Currently 82 in Lincoln, Nebraska, 70 degrees, the temperature in Mason City. Zooming in closer to Siouxland now, it's 78 outside in Yankton, 80 degrees in O'Neill, temperature of 78 in Norfolk, 77 in Denison, and the temperature now is 75, 80 is going through the course of next week. Some nice sunny skies, and it looks like we'll have some quiet weather going into next weekend. Speaking of which, here's a beautiful sunrise. This was passed in from Jan in Wakefield, Nebraska. If you have a picture that you want to share, go to SiouxLandProud.com, go to the weather tab, and send us your photos. Obviously, that was taken before uh, any of those storms rolled through yesterday. Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, coming up next, as summer winds down, folks squeezing in one last vacation, maybe, but COVID-19 threatening travel plans for many as officials pump the brakes on international travel. How 
the industry impacts the economy. Coming up, but first, Americans with federal student loans will have a little more time to pay them back, but the Biden administration says this is the last pause on payments. Details next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. Welcome back. The Biden administration has extended the pause on federal student loan payments now until the end of January. But the Department of Education says this is the final extension. Officials say a definitive end date, January 31st, will reduce the risk of delinquency and defaults once payments start again. The pause on payments was set to expire the end of September, but the administration decided to extend that pause because of the surge in coronavirus cases. Again, that's due to the Delta variant. And President Joe Biden says his American Rescue Plan is putting people back to work. The Labor Department says the United States added 943,000 jobs in the month of July, and the unemployment rate fell to 5.4 percent. The increase in jobs was much higher than most analysts had predicted, but President Biden says there is still a long road ahead as the Delta variant could put a pause on the economic recovery we're seeing. My message today is not one of celebration. It's one to remind us we got a lot of hard work left to be done. Businesses tend to be a little bit more conservative on hiring, on investing, and on taking risk, and that could pose a headwind to the economic recovery. Meanwhile, a major factor in the United States economic rebound is allowing international travel once again. But as our Washington correspondent Alexandra Limon explains, the Biden administration is starting to plan for the return of more international travel to the U.S., but says the U.S. isn't quite ready for that yet. The international travel industry is going broke. If we don't do anything now, by the end of the year, the U.S. will lose $90 billion and 1.5 million jobs. Roger Dow, president and CEO of the U.S. Travel Association, says international travel is crucial to the U.S. economy. But the Biden administration says now is not the time to open the U.S. to international travelers. We will uh, plan to maintain existing travel restrictions at this point. The Biden administration says agencies are starting to develop plans for international travelers to be able to return to the U.S. in a safe and consistent way. But only when the time is right. White House COVID response coordinator Jeffrey Zients says when the U.S. does open to tourists and other non-essential travelers. For national traveling to the United States may, um, there's, there's still policy work being done here, may need to have some type of a vaccine uh, requirement. We're okay with this being a first step. Over the long term, we think the travel community and countries have to figure out how multiple ways you can enter a country. Dow says when travelers return, the money and jobs will too. In Washington, Alexandra Limon, KCAU 9 News. Some Republicans are attacking the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal after the Congressional Budget Office predicted that plan will add $256 billion to the federal deficit over the next 10 years and middle-class Americans will bear the burden. White House economist Heather Boshi says that the investment will pay for itself. Making sure that bridges don't fall down, making sure that people have access to broadband, that's going to keep businesses working. These are the kinds of investments that are going to pay off over the long term. The president has been crystal clear from day one that um, he will not raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. Senators are in session this weekend to work on that plan. Democrats need at least 10 Republicans to vote yes to push this bill forward. And we switch gears now. KCAU Night Sports Director Jake Jones joins us. And Jake, what do you have tonight? Well, the exes happen to be back at Lewis and Clark Park tonight. But would an <laughs> old explorer crash the party? Well, those highlights and more still to come after the break. Today was also a special day for Coyote Nation as the city of Vermilion welcomed their newest Olympian, pole vaulter Chris Nilsson, who comes back to South Dakota with a silver medal in tow and, well, Coyote Nation made sure he was greeted with plenty of support. KCAU 9's Noah Saka reports. After jumping a personal best in claiming the silver medal in the pole vault final, Chris Nilsson certainly left his mark in Tokyo. 
And the University of South Dakota made sure to give the NCAA three-time champion a proper homecoming to celebrate his return to the United States. I feel very loved and very grateful and humbled by this whole experience. It was a valiant trip back to Vermilion as the crowd flew both American and coyote flags to greet the silver medalist from his Olympic debut in Japan. You never really realize how many people are supporting you from like other places that you just don't know until you like see them all in one room and you're talking in front of them. So I don't know, it's like another family. After competing just three days ago, the coyote community saw its star athlete ride down Cherry Street with a police escort and his new hardware. You feel like a proud parent, and I know our athletes feel like proud brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, it's that family atmosphere that not only in the athletic department, but on campus in this community that, that I think really sees uh, the, the pride really kind of come out in, a, in for Chris. Nilsson is the first in Coyote history to secure a silver medal. And from one Olympian to another, Coach Derek Miles says Chris is one of a kind. I think the thing that's been most impressive is his intensity when it matters. Like, when it's game time, you can guarantee he always shows up. Chris's impact on the USD campus will be felt for a long time, and he has done his part to grow the sport of pole vaulting as well as the Nilsson name. It's like the culmination of every five-year-old's dream when they said they wanted to grow up and be an Olympic athlete. I just got to, I got to actually like live it out. It's just, it's a weird euphoric experience that I'm never ever going to forget. A wonderful celebration for such an unforgettable athlete. In Vermilion, Noah Sacco, KCU Nine Sports. Really can't even sum up how cool that is uh, for our yep. community here. And that's only his first Olympics. He's probably still got at least two or three left in the can. Let's not jinx him. We got some wood around <laughs> here, but I have a feeling that you're right. All right, thanks a lot, Jake. Can we check in for a final forecast? First, let's take you outside in this warm night in Sioux Center. Finally tonight, we had to leave you on a cute note. A zoo in Japan, home of the Olympics right now, welcoming new babies, but their baby talk might surprise you. <laughs> now, if you close your eyes, are they birds? Or are they cheetahs? Who knew? Six recently born cubs use an unexpected way to communicate with their mother by, yes, that is chirping. The unique mammals are not yet on display to the general public, so this is a very special look at them. They are at the Chiba Zoological Park in Japan, but the zoo says they hope that will change by late September, and these little babies can be out in public. Now, I don't know enough about cheetahs to tell you when they start or stop chirping, but, uh, this is super cute. My producer's saying never, so that's <laughs> really cool. Who knew? I learned something new today. Not I just birds. I did not know cheetahs chirp. How about it? Alliteration. You, no puns for us tonight, Scott? I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, not this time. Okay, well, you'll get back to us. But you have well, a decent cheetah, weather amount to report. You kind of did right there. You kind of did one yourself, putting me on the spot, talking oh, about cheetahs. <laughs> see, but only you pick it go. up. He's our punniest guy, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, there might be a couple of chirps on the weather radios overnight. There is a small chance of seeing severe storms, mainly in southeast South Dakota. That's where the National Weather Service has put out a severe thunderstorm watch. It lasts until 4 a.m. on Saturday. We're looking at Bonham and Hutchinson counties. Those storms are currently in central South Dakota, working their way to the east with some pretty powerful wind gusts. 72 degrees, the overnight low with some rain after midnight. Another chance of seeing some strong storms late tomorrow afternoon, stretching into the evening. And it's going to be pretty hot next week. Highs right around 90. Oof, all right, thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you for joining us all. Have a great weekend, everyone.